So who do you say that he is? A scholar, a teacher, a rabbi, a preacher? Maybe a good man who lived long ago, or maybe a prophet, or just a carpenter's son. Or was he just a character from a great book who saw a crippled man come down through a roof, and when he spoke, the man stood? Or when he took some mud, rubbed it on a blind man's eyes, and cured the blind man's sight, so divine this man's life? See, some call him the Lamb of God. Some call him just a man of God under the hand of God who used to ramble on with a bunch of random thoughts. Others say he can be whoever you want him to be. It doesn't matter if you're a fan or not. That kind of thinking turns churches into abandoned lots. So who do you say that he is? See, you call him a liar, a joke. He's not real enough. Someone you can't feel enough. Will he ever be enough? Maybe, if you believed enough. See, you call him inconvenient. He's not worth the hassle. He's not worth the time taken from your precious life that you've worked so hard to obtain. How dare he take that away? See, you call him boring, irrelevant, just a messenger with a message you don't fully accept. He's a person you don't fully respect. A man that you so often forget. And your views toward him, often so cynical, so critical. You treat him like he's fictional or mythical. It's pitiful. And maybe these words will never come from your mouth, but your actions tell that you don't care what he's about. So speak it out or not, you've said all these things aloud. See, it's easy to give lip service to this man's purpose. You say it's him you worship, but you only know him on the surface. It's crazy, isn't it? You read what is written in the word of God and say you believe, but are you really living it? So I ask again, who do you say that he is? See, it was you who mocked his name that day. You release Barabbas and all his filth in exchange for righteous blood that would spill from the body of the one you killed. See, you call him a crook and a criminal as you kicked him in his side as he stumbled up that hill. I still get chills as I hear the shrill of his voice in my head. It's so real. His flesh peeled from your hands as you gripped the whip and drove it in his skin and ripped it out again. See, you called him an imposter as you took thorns from the ground, made them into a crown, and forced them down on his brow. For every inch that dug deeper, the more blood that would drip out. See, you accused him of blasphemy, false authority. You went along with the majority, conformity to the crowd that shouted, crucify this man, and let's do it forcefully. See, you clenched your fist and struck his face as he stood there in his loneliness, ultimate loneliness, from what appeared to be hopelessness. I can still see his body quiver as he gasped for air with his swollen lips. And you called him a fraud and a faker as you drove the stakes into the hands and feet of our Savior. See, he called you forgiven, but you called him forbidden. When he was calling you to himself, you turned away and refused to listen. So it was you who labeled the sign on the cross after he was abused. You etched the words into the wood above his head that read, Jesus of Nazareth, King of the Jews.